ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, just coming to you guys today to talk about a couple of things. Some of you have had the occasion of meeting police officers. Aren't they the greatest group of guys? Putting their life on the line every single day. And their job is to catch the bad guys. Yes, we don't want bad guys in our community. And so we have elected to pay taxes that takes care of the salaries of these wonderful, wonderful men and women of law enforcement. Did you know that sometimes, like the X-Men, police officers can have a rogue agent? If you didn't get the analogy in the X-Men, there's a young lady and her name is Rogue and she often goes off the rails, off the rails. It's an idiom that is used to signify something that doesn't stay on track. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta pause y'all for a second, okay? What just happened is I was using a generator as part of the system and I had the refrigerators plugged into the same unit and the buzzer's going off. So could you hold on a second? One moment. Okay, i back. What I had to do is I had to go and, um, I had to go in, yeah, and I had to do that. And and once I did that, then I had to do some other stuff. And so now I'm back. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, he's going to finish explaining to you guys. I just had to go ahead and explain to you what the words meant so that you would have better understand what he's trying to say. Okay? Idioms and, you know, that type of stuff. All right. You, you ready? Okay. He, he ready, y'all. All right, ladies and gentlemen. See, the situation is. As much as there is good in everyone, that's right, there is good in everyone, sometimes you might have a fraternity. And the fraternities like to have their own order. And when they do their orders, they become officers. And when they become officers, the court wants to get involved. And then the court wants to be greedy and make them their officers too. Can't do that. Can't do that. The people did not hire you to do that. So you can't do that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, no, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm, my bad. So here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is what's going on. And you all, all of you, that means you too. No, no, yeah, you, I'm talking to you. That means you. You all are not understanding what you're dealing with. You're trying to argue with police officers. These police officers are being trained that you are the enemy. They're being trained that you are crazy, that you're going to hurt them, that you are a threat to them, which is why they're pulling their guns. But see, here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. The police are trained to shoot to kill. You guys know about the, uh, I think the young man, man's name is Dwight. Um, but that particular case where the officer pulled him over, said he was either on a suspended license, and they pulled him over because he had something hanging from the mirror. Ladies and gentlemen, hanging from the mirror? Wait. Y'all don't understand why that law is unconstitutional and why it should have been challenged from the beginning? Ladies and gentlemen, hanging something from your mirror, they say, obstructs your view. Sorry, the mirror obstructs my view. I can't see through the mirror. Sorry, I have side mirrors. I don't, oh, by the way, do you know if you have a, two side mirrors, you don't need a reverse mirror? Yeah, I know, I know. But it's this technical stuff that people like me, we know about. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the police have more objects in their windshield, in their windows, than you do. But they pulled him over. Pay attention. She pulled him over because he was a young black man. 
what you all and don't don't this ain't no black or white thing this is a black thing but you all don't get it you don't realize the police are trained to stop young black men because all young black men from slavery time must be up to no good that that's the so-called culture go ahead find a young black man who's been driving for at least 10 years and ask them have they been stopped more than 10 times go ahead well the police they have to do this and they have to do that they have to do a lot of things but you don't find the same with other races hispanics i know you guys are catching up and you young asian individuals they're catching up <laughs> y'all catching up too but sorry disproportionately young black men are pulled over by the police for what reason well they fit the description you have no idea how many times i've been told that i fit the description so i asked them what description is that and of course you know they've never answered some of them have gotten sarcastic a guy wearing blue jeans and a t-shirt really so if i go down to your station and pull a copy of the logs i'll be able to pull a copy of that log right well sort of da, 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 and the subject changes oh, i've been doing this for a while people i've been dealing with these idiots for a while see unlike most people young men who grew up in the so-called hood we are taught how to deal with the police everybody don't seem to understand we're taught to be respectful we don't catch attitudes with the police it's the police who catch the attitude what are you talking about well the first thing the police do is they ask you a stupid question now what you don't realize the police is asking a stupid question on purpose they don't really want you to tell them where you were headed that's not important to them what they're trying to do is gauge your reaction they're trying to look at the pupil of your eyes which is why they flash a flashlight so there are two things that you should say to the police when they pull you over excuse me officer are you conducting an investigation well i'm sorry i'm not at liberty to participate in your investigation sorry i am required by my attorney not to participate in your investigation as it might lead to my testifying against myself under whatever circumstance you are putting together so if you don't mind i would like to be on my way and you can conduct your investigation without my being present as I am not under obligation to help you with your investigation. Then if he continues, driver's license and registration, I'm sorry, what do you need my driver's license and my registration for? You're conducting an investigation. If I gave you my driver's license and registration, that means I would be participating in your investigation and would be introducing evidence against myself, per se, if I had done something wrong. I'm sorry. I cannot be compelled to offer evidence against myself. He's going to get this look on his face. He's going to think you're playing a game. I'm sorry, officer, are you telling me that you're not conducting an investigation? Because if you tell me and give me your word, you're not conducting an investigation, by all means, we can have a conversation. But no, I do not want anything I say or do to be used against me. And doing something such as giving you my property would be participating. It would be doing something that can be used against me later. I do not choose or wish to participate in such an investigation. Ladies and gentlemen, let's say a person has a warrant out for their arrest. No, hold on, like this young man whom the officer shot. That's where this started, this conversation started from. Let's say the person has a warrant out for their arrest and they know they have a warrant out for their arrest. Okay, well, instead of you having an argument with the officer, you know that you're eventually gonna be arrested. So simply just tell them you do not wish to participate in their investigation. That you're going to exercise your right 
to not incriminate yourself under any circumstances. They'll say something stupid as, well, have you done something wrong? I'm sorry, have you done anything wrong? Now, of course, they're going to get sarcastic again. Well, la, 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 la. excuse me, you didn't answer my question. Have you done something wrong? Are you doing something wrong at this moment? Now he's going to get frustrated. It's okay. And that's what you tell him. I'm sorry, it's okay. Because when you asked me the same question, I didn't get upset with you. But when I asked you the same question, you got upset with me. What gives you the right to ask a question and I don't have that very same right? You pulled me over. You're interfering with my right to travel. And yet, when you ask me a question, I respond. But when I ask you a question, you don't answer. So no, I do not wish to participate in your one-sided investigation because it does not appear that you are being fair. He will go on, do his little talking. He will tell you to step out of the vehicle. I'm sorry, is that an order? Because remember, the police are not giving you orders. They're making suggestions. When you comply with it, then you're volunteering. Don't want you to get an attitude with them. Don't want you to be upset. I'm sorry, is that an order, is what you say. And then... Remember, with every order, there must be a bill. So what you do is you're going to bill him. I apologize, but I cannot comply with that order. What I need you to do at this point is I need you to get me a sergeant. Because I did not hear you mention a violation of law. Well, the code, blah, blah, blah. Excuse me, the code? Wait a minute. The code? You put me over for a code? Do you know that the code is not law? Wait a minute. Where, where did you where did you go to law school at? Okay, so then you should understand, being a peace officer, that the code is not law. Regulations are not law. Ladies and gentlemen, I would love to show you case text right now and talk to you about codes and regulations and whether or not they're law. We'll do that in a moment. But for right now, the young man who was pulled over and the officer is trying to force him out of the car, the only thing she has is something on a computer screen saying that there's an outstanding warrant. That computer screen is not the law. That computer screen is not government. That computer screen is just a computer screen. There is only prima facie evidence that that information is accurate. Wait, you're saying I have a warrant out? Do you not know that if I had a warrant and you were fulfilling that warrant, that you have to produce the warrant? So where's the warrant? You claim that is out on me as a person? Do you not know that if there is a warrant out, I have a right to be notified prior to the issuance of that warrant? So where is the warrant? What, you don't have a copy? Then you don't have any jurisdiction. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to suggest all of you do your research and find out that in order for the police to execute a warrant, they must get that warrant from a judge. This is the practice. It is not the law that any police officer can arrest somebody when they have knowledge of a warrant. What, you guys didn't know? Go back to the 1800s. When there was a reward being offered for somebody, they posted that. The information from the authority was on that. Do you not watch the movies and see how they brought that poster with them? Because that was the warrant. And they showed the person. See, that's you. <laughs> You're going to jail. <laughs> no, that's you. No, no, I'm sorry. Look, got the same sky and everything. That's you. And this is the judge saying you are going to be arrested right now. Put your hands up. All right, you're going to want to put your hands up. Okay, uh, how many in the back do you want? No, because I know you're going to want to take off. And I will shoot you in the back because this is dead or alive. Okay, want it dead or alive. Peace.
pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Things have not changed. The same as they needed a warrant back then. Now look, don't take my word for it. Did he say don't take his word for it? That's what he said. Well, then I don't think we should take his word for it. Then what are we going to do? Well, I think we should sit up here and do our own research and find out whether or not the police in our state need the actual warrant when they arrest somebody. You know, that sounds like a good idea. I think I'll do that. Oh, I think I'm going to do it too. You can see if you do it and I do it and we compile our information and we put our information, we can help a whole lot of people. I believe you're right. I think that we should do that. We should join hands and join teams. Kumbaya, mother... Okay, ladies and gentlemen, again, the police do a very dangerous job. You guys have seen it. You guys have seen some of the individuals out there who are morbid, who don't care about life, who don't care about people, who don't care about children, who don't care about women, who don't care about the law. You've seen it. So there is a need for somebody to enforce the law. That's why they're called law enforcement officers. However, when they're enforcing a statute or a code or an ordinance, those are not laws. You do not have an obligation under those laws unless you signed a contract. Oh, no! I signed the contract! I signed the, 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 the stupid application for the driver's license! That's easily undone. Before your license is suspended, return your license to them. Ladies and gentlemen, if your license gets suspended, return your license with a letter to them saying, here is your license back. I no longer choose to be, wish to be, or am electing to be regulated by your agency. I do no longer wish to participate in this program. I no longer want to be a franchise of your entity. Please remove my name and this license associated with my lane, name from your roles. I would deeply appreciate it. And go and get you a regular ID. We've told you all about the New Hampshire House Bill 1778. New Hampshire House Bill 1778. Google it. Read the preface. The so-called purpose of that bill. Don't worry about whether or not it passed or not. Okay, it was already the law. They were just amending it. Don't worry about whether or not it passed or not. It's already the law. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the law in every state. Do you know that in every state they issue to people an ID entitled right to travel? What, you didn't know? I've been telling you I've been doing this since 2008. Y'all are not listening? Ladies and gentlemen, I drive with a so-called government-issued ID. I do not drive. Yes, I drive with a government-issued ID. It tells you right on the ID, this is not a permit to drive. So I am not driving. I'm not permitted to drive commercially. It tells you it's not a permit to operate a commercial vehicle. Let me see. This one, this ID I have in my wallet is from Puerto Rico. So let me open it up and let me see if it says that on there. It says identification, identification de Puerto Rico, de Puerto Rico. Sorry, got to say it correctly. Oh, yeah, and everybody was having a problem when they were having that not-for-real ID purposes. Oh, uh, my ID expired today. So I got 30 days, y'all, to get another ID. 30 days, I tell you, to get another ID. Let's see. I don't see it on this one. I know it's on here, but the print is so fine. 
But I do know that the state issued IDs say this is not a permit to drive or to operate a motor vehicle. It lets you know that it is not a permit to operate a motor vehicle. So you're not allowed, not permitted to operate commercially. That's fine. But you guys already have your right to travel identification. It's called a state ID. You don't need a driver's license to drive an automobile. You need a driver's license to operate. Why? Because that is a commercial title, a commercial term. If you don't believe me, look it up. You need a driver's license to operate a motor vehicle. Pay attention to what the courts are saying. Just simply let them know. I don't need a driver's license to travel non-commercially. I need a driver's license if I am operating in commerce. If I am involved in trafficking. That's why they issue traffic tickets, people. It's called trafficking. You don't know that's why they get drug dealers for trafficking drugs? Trafficking drugs. You're trafficking. You're in commerce. Trafficking drugs because they're making a, a, a profit. They're making money. That's why you can arrest drug dealers because they're making money. That's why the police need to see money exchange hands. Other than that, it's just simple possession. Uh, give me some possession. Give me some of the possessions. <laughs> That's crack. I can do some possession of crack. <laughs> Don't I sound like I'm on crack? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope some of this is making sense to you because the information has been there the whole time. That young man, when he saw what they were doing, he knew something was wrong, which is why he tried to get back into the car. He knew something was wrong. Now, look, they knew he wasn't going for a gun. They knew that. Go back and watch the reaction of the officers. She pulled her gun because she did her job. That's the way she's trained. She followed her training. Nobody can get upset with her over that. She pulled the trigger. Now, when I first heard the case, I pay attention. When I first heard that case, I said, how could she mistake that for her gun? Ladies and gentlemen, they, it's a routine. They go through all the time. It is right next to her gun. It is right next to where her gun is. Same because she's right-handed. So that taser is on the right side. Left-handed, left side. That's the problem. She pulled the trigger because she thought she was pulling the taser. I give her credit for that. The reaction you see that woman, her reaction was legitimate. That wasn't her pretending. I've watched that over and over and over again. I did not see it at first. They did not show that to the public at first. And had they shown that to the public, the public would have had a much different response. But they wanted to hold that information. Ladies and gentlemen, that woman did not intend to kill, uh, oh, Dwight, I think his name is. She did not intend to kill him. Now, I'm not making excuses for her. She, she should not be on trial. Yes, yes, the young man lost his life, and I promise you, I am very hurt by it today as I was the day that it happened, and I, I really do feel for his girlfriend and his mother and father because nobody should have to go through that type of pain. I told you I lost my best friend, and lost several other friends, and lost my mother. I hate death. And so that young man should not have had to die. No, ain't nothing. He should have did this. He should have, that is not the issue. He was trying to do everything the right way. They pulled him over because they saw something in his mirror. Well, it's also because the license and then the registration, it doesn't matter, people doesn't matter he's dead none of that junk matters the trial doesn't matter he's dead what they're putting that officer through is for show ladies and gentlemen because she didn't do anything outside of her training I am sorry if people don't like that I am sorry but it is the truth 
when I first heard it, go back and listen to the video. It's on the same day that this happened. And I talked about it, even while I was, no, it's not, a, yeah, I did it on the telephone because I was on vacation at that time. But I talked about it, y'all. I told everybody. I said, hey, everybody. And they said, what you got cooking? And I said, how's she going to mistake her taser for a gun? Then I watched it. And I see her reaction. Ladies and gentlemen, to show you how shocked everybody was, because they didn't think that he had a gun. Pay attention. Go back and watch the officer's reactions. Nobody got in their car and followed him. He took off. Nobody got on their radio. We have a fleeing suspect. Nobody jumped in their cars and said, we got to go. Nothing. They watched the vehicle crash. They watched the vehicle crash, ladies and gentlemen. They just stood there because they were all just as shocked as she was. Because they knew that the situation did not call for a gun. They perceived by the young man's personality that that was not going to be the case. The rest of you, stop arguing with the police. Okay, they're being trained to ignore you. They're being trained to get physical with you. They're being trained to shoot you if you get too far out of line. She shot him in the chest. She wasn't intending on shooting him in the chest. His girlfriend is there too. She wasn't intending on shooting him in the chest. None of the other officers pulled their gun. She was intending on tasing him. You can see it. You can see it in her reaction. I'm sorry. She couldn't fake that. If she was faking, the way she rolled on that ground was in disbelief. When she said, I shot him, I shot him, oh my God, I shot him. She, you can see that she is distraught. Sorry, there's some things you cannot fake. You can see that she was devastated by that. And the fact that she's now in jail as a result of that, because the prosecution wants to sit up there and give one for the homo sapiens who are of color. Yeah. I'm transferring files. Uh, let me put that down there so that you guys can see the taste the rainbow. Um, oh, wait a minute. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I got the screen up here. And what I did not know is that y'all couldn't see the rainbow. Y'all couldn't see the waterfall or nothing because the screen is like that. Hold on one second. There we go. That's the waterfall. Ooh -wee. Let me get that stuff out of the way because that stuff ain't supposed to be here. Go on now. Come on, y'all. Move out of the way. They don't want to move, y'all. There they go. Oh, they came back. Got to go. I said, gotta go. They don't want to go, y'all. Okay, they go. All right, so. Row, row, row your boat. Anyway, let's get back to the reason for this video because we were talking about police officers. I only mentioned that situation because it's in the news and because it's primal for the police pulling people over and you all see, we were doing the non-citizen national IDs. But again, we told everybody, I told everybody, ladies and gentlemen, I realized I don't need a driver's license. Since 2008, I have not had a driver's license. I've only had a state ID. Whenever the police pull me over, didn't matter who they were, didn't matter what city, what state I was driving through. They always got an ID. You don't have a driver's license? Excuse me? What did I just hand you? Okay, you asked me for identification. You got ident No, I asked you for a driver's license. Excuse me. You asked me for identification. What you guys do not know is there is no law that requires you to have a driver's license for traveling. You're only required to have a driver's license if you're operating commercially. I took the CDL. Ladies and gentlemen, 
In California, I've had a Class A, a Class B, a Class C license. I've taken the test for the Class B several times. I've taken the test for the Class C several times. I've taken the test for the Class A, which is now the CDL, several times. When I take tests, I go over the manual. Remember I told you, hey, manual, what up? I, I ain't spoke to manual in a while. But remember I told you that Maxine Waters, that I worked for Maxine Waters when I was 15 years old at her school, WLCAC, the Watts Labor Community Action Committee, that she brought, literally recruited me and my sister, came to my mother. My mother said, you got to talk to their father, spoke to my father. My father would not have let us be a part of Maxine Waters' program if he thought she was going to take advantage of us. Well, she did try. She wanted me to be some type of politician, and I told her no. I told her I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I would never, ever be involved in politics. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said that his followers are no part of the world. So no, I would never do, I would never do politics, ever. Just that simple. Just, just want to make sure. Maxine understood that because my father explained it to her. <laughs> she thought she could come around the corner and talk to me while my father's back was turned. And it wasn't going to work that way. My father and I were on the same page. My father and I were on the same page. 15 years old was the same time I was not communicating with my father. Okay? This The only problem is he spoke with her a couple of months before he passed. And I remember my sister and I waiting to see what the response was, waiting to see if he would allow it. Because, you know, sometimes people say no, and they mean it. <laughs> my father was the type of person, if he said no, that was the end of it. Wasn't nobody going to change it? And what no police officer or no state official or no CPS or anybody else was going to come and tell him different. Okay, just that simple. Well, he said yes. And when I went to Maxine Waters and was part of that class because she held classes after school, every single day of the week, my father said, oh, no, y'all can do it. But if it interferes with his schoolwork and if it interferes he said their schoolwork, not just mine, my sister's too, that interferes in any way with their meeting attendance, then <laughs> y'all can kiss that goodbye. He wasn't joking. We did not miss a single meeting at the Keenum Hall when we were younger. Okay? And I appreciated that because that's what helped develop me into the man I am today. Ladies and gentlemen, Maxine Waters said, when you go on a job, the first thing you do is you grab that manual, that employee handbook, and you read it from cover to cover. Find out what the rules are and the procedures are. That way, if anything ever happens, anybody ever give you any problems, you use that to defend yourself. So, again, I've always had the mindset of using their junk against them. That's what that young lady helped teach me. That's even what the scriptures help teach me. If you look at several situations in the Bible where individuals were placed in certain situations and they used the laws, like Paul, using, I appeal to Caesar, using the laws of the different nations that were around them to defend themselves. Look at Daniel when he and his three companions were being told that if they did not eat the delicacies of the king, blah, blah, blah. Daniel said, excuse me, pardon me. Would it be okay if I speak? And he spoke. And he used their own procedures to his benefit. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what I'm doing. I'm using the laws and the procedures to my benefit. My benefit, not yours benefit my benefit okay because that's the only benefit that counts all right now let's continue because this video is about one thing it's about police officers 
and what police officers are allowed and not allowed to do. Would you guys like to find out something that police officers are allowed to do that you didn't know? I know you knew that they did it, but I don't think you knew that they were allowed to do this. I want you to pay attention. This is case text. Case text! Qualified immunity. Y'all heard of qualified immunity. Watch this. Police officers enjoy qualified immunity from federal courts or in, from suits in federal courts. They can only be held liable. Pay attention. This is the way you get police officers who step out of bounds, those rogue agents. They can only be held liable if you can satisfy two, well, the two-step prong. Let's do the two-step taste. Test, taste, test, taste, test, taste, tasting test. Anyway, first, the plaintiff, meaning you, sorry about that, must allege deprivation of a constitutionally protected right, the Fifth Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the First Amendment, the sometimes the Second Amendment, the Sixth Amendment, the Eighth Amendment, and the Ninth and Tenth Amendments. Those are your secured rights delegated by the Constitution. 14th Amendment is not a secured right. It's a benefit. All right. We have already determined the plaintiffs have alleged a deprivation of two constitutional rights. Second, here's the second prong you must allege. They must show that the constitutional right was so clearly established that a reasonable officer would understand that what he was doing violates the law. Ladies and gentlemen, you take the constitutional right, such as your right to be free from self-incrimination, your right to have probable cause determined by the court. These are rights that they can't. That's why you hear me say secured constitutional rights. Amendments, one. Two is not so much secured as you might think, but one, two, four, five, six, Eight, nine, and ten. Those are secured rights. They're secured because they're each associated with the inalienable rights. All right. It says whether or not, or the question as to whether or not the agents acted reasonably under settled law in the circumstances. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. It is not whether or not they acted reasonably. It's whether or not they violated the person's rights. No one can be held to answer. No one can be held to answer. That includes you. No one can be held to answer. The question of immunity is typically one for the court to decide rather than for a jury. Actually, pay attention. The question of immunity is typically one for the court to decide. Where's that at? Where's that law at? You see, the court doesn't get to decide whether or not the police acted reasonably. If a person demands a jury trial, they have a right to a jury trial. Jury trial is required civilly and criminally. If a person is trying to sue a police officer criminally, then jury trial is a right by law. There is no such thing as a non-jury trial and the person still exercising their right to a jury trial. It is not a matter for... See, they said typically. So let's get rid of this word. See, that's one of those fillers. So... Let's get rid of typically. We're not going to hold on to typically. The question of immunity is one for the court to decide rather than the jury. There is no law. You just have a Supreme Court ruling saying something stupid like that. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the right to have a jury make such a determination, but now you have to explain why you have the right to have a jury because the jury is paneled and recognized to know the law. So when there's a question of law, the jury is able to interpret and decide the law because each one of them are supposed to be non-ignoramuses of law. So the jury can decide questions of law. The provisions and case that we have relied upon indicate that the law was not unclear or unsettled at the time the events in question. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for that popping up. Oh, I know why that's popping up. I done been thrown off the internet again. 
I apologize. I got to pause y'all again. Give me one second. I apologize. It appears I'm still connected, even though it says I'm not connected. It appears I'm still connected because it looks like I'm able to go backwards. But see how slow it is? So that's a parallel desktop because I am on Microsoft and on a Mac. So that's a parallel desktop issue. Uh -huh. Okay, give me one second. I'm on the other computer as well, and I'm waiting for that to come up. But I do need to finish telling you guys what's going on and why I was, why we is there. So I'm just checking a document because I'm hoping I'm going to have to send this to myself because this is a document that I worked on yesterday. And yay, it looks like it's going to do what it do. Something went wrong? What went wrong? Why would I got to try again in a few minutes? Why don't I just try right now? Come on now.